going to do now is look at dental emergencies. If something's happened to your tooth, maybe you've got, uh, got it knocked. Now the best person to talk to this would be to a dentist. So if somebody was maybe playing rugby and they got their tooth broken, what would you want them to do before they actually got to you in the dental practice? Right, well, depends largely on at what level that the, the tooth is broken. Um, sort of dental injuries tend to be classified as to how far down they've, they've broken. So there's, there's just an enamel chip, which would just be the edge off the tooth. That can go into the dentine, the second layer of the tooth, um, or then into the, the pulp, which is the nerve in the middle of the tooth. All three of those, really, it's just protecting it, um, keeping your mouth closed probably so it's, it's not too cold, um, and then getting to see a, a dentist to, to get it repaired and patched up. Um, the worst case scenario is, of course, knocking a tooth out completely. And in those cases, it's first of all finding the tooth. You know, if that may be on the floor in a pile of mud. Um, and in which case, that tooth needs to be cleaned before it's put back in. Um, so if it, it's something that can be cleaned, um, and I don't mean scrub, scrubbing it with a, you know, a toothbrush or anything. This is you know, irrigating it off, so using saline or... Uh, to hand perhaps some milk to, to wash it off. Because um, the best thing to do is to get that tooth straight back in into the right place. Um, push it home as far as you can. Um, close your teeth together so you know it's seated into the right place. Um, and I'll obviously get it round the right way because it has been known to be put in the wrong way around. So if they've actually got that tooth back in place, is there a matter of holding it in place, applying pressure, or is it just a matter of trying to leave it? There? Um, you, you know, if if you can do anything, if you, for example you've got a gum shield, that put in over the top is going to keep that tooth in the right position until you get to see your dentist, and your dentist is then going, likely to then stick that tooth to the to the neighbouring teeth using a little bit of white filling material usually. Um, perhaps with a little bit of wire as well, just to, to keep it in the right place while the bone and uh, the ligament that holds the tooth in place heals itself. The tooth will probably need to be root filled then in due course, but the initial emergency is to get that tooth back in place. So getting the person to you is important. Is there anything they should or shouldn't do on pain relief at that stage? Is it best to avoid anything within pain relief at that stage? Um, not particularly. I mean, it's, it's going to be tender, no doubt, because it's you know, as much the lip. If a, if a tooth's been impacted, the lip's usually in the way. Um, so it's really just getting that, that initial trauma dealt with. So paracetamol, ibuprofen, whatever people would normally take for a headache really is the best thing. Um, and then just trying to, to see a dentist as, as soon as possible. In the absence of being able to see a dentist, then casualty will be the, the next, um, next port of call um, because they'll have all surgery um, staff who will be able to deal with, with um, sort of avulsion of a tooth, which is what it's known when a tooth comes out completely. But for the more minor injuries that are involving the, the other layers of the teeth, that's going to be a, a general dentist sort of uh, area to deal with, uh, in which case it may well be painkillers until uh, you can get an appointment. So one thing my mother always used to say was the use of clove oil or whiskey perhaps on the tooth. Is, is this correct? Um, well, it can help anything that's going to provide you, um, you know, the initial pain relief. Um, whether the whiskey helps or not is, uh, is a different matter. Um, perhaps take a bottle for the dentist that's coming up to see you, that might be uh, as well. But, uh, um, you know, anything that will give you um, pain relief is, is fine. Um, just, you know, if you're driving, obviously the whiskey may not be such a good idea. And then finally, if we're dealing with perhaps a child, uh, and the child's bit the one who's had the injury, children would be very upset about anything like this. Mm -hmm. um, are there any tips on trying to calm them down? Because A, they're going to be upset about hurting you know, the tooth itself, and B, they're probably going to be more scared of coming to see you. Is there any ways you can calm children down? In the initial phase, really, it's uh, cleaning them up. So if there's a lot of blood about, you know, with any sort of head injury, there's going to be a reasonable amount of blood, and especially if it's around the mouth as well. Um, and children feel a lot ba better about it if, th when they look in the mirror, okay, they've got a tooth that's damaged, but if their face isn't also covered in blood, then they tend to calm down. Um, you know, the, the blood does tend to make them panic a little bit. Um, and then it's just being calm with them, really, and, and, and not... Um, 
try not to make it into a big issue and, and make it as, as matter of fact as it can be. Um, that it's, you know, oh, that's fine, we'll take you to the dentist and they'll, they'll be able to sort it out for you. And, you know, don't make it into a big issue for them. You know, if you, uh, if you suddenly all arrive and, uh, you know, there's about four adults accompanying a child, it's going to make it into a big event for them. Whereas if it's just whoever's with the child at the time, takes them along to the dentist straight away, doesn't make a big issue of it, it's going to be a, a more relaxed thing, a more normal thing for the child to deal with.